Next up is Jerome Samanye with the HDF group, who's going to present uh, a fall connector built around the Deos object storage system. Jerome? Um, yeah. Um, should, uh, should I share my entire screen or just the, can I just share the Outlook app? Usually you can just share the app. The yeah. app window is okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll just show my entire screen because it That's says fine too. Microsoft PowerPoint unknowns. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can oh, hold on. Uh, it says I have to grant access. I could play some bump music or something here. Let me find some. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Obviously, I'm not using Zoom that much. This. Um, I think you were using it more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you see my screen? That's great. We have the presenter view, though. If you want to go full screen, that'd be great. Yeah. So, all right, you're good. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to just give a, a presentation of the work that we've been doing uh, on the Deos from the Deos forum. Um, so just to give you some background, um, that's been an effort that's been going on for a couple of years now, and uh, I have to say that the uh, well, entire team has been has put a lot of effort into it. So I hope uh, I can <laughs> uh, give credit to that to that work. Um, Um, so in that presentation, I'm going to try to focus on a few things. Uh, obviously, I don't have time to present uh, everything. Um, but uh, what I feel is important to try to, to address uh, is uh, give a current state of the HDF5 parallel IO, um, uh, as you know it uh, now, and uh, try to make you understand why it's not sufficient for exascale. Um, give you an introduction of the Intel uh, Deos uh, storage system uh, so, so that you understand what it is if you're not familiar with it. Uh, also present the Deos wall connector and give some uh, uh, description of the X file format and then spend some time on the new features usage, give some uh, early performance results and uh, where we are at. All right, so um, uh, the state of HDF5 parallel I/O. Uh, so as you know it now. Uh, so if you're familiar, if you've been using H uh, parallel HDF5, I think that um, and you just want to create, let's say, a simple file with a uh, few groups and data set. Uh, you probably have noticed, and uh, I know myself as a first HDF5 user, the first thing that I was maybe uh, Kind of surprise with this, uh, my h 5 create and hgcreate and dcreate need to be collective. Um, and that's not uh, a coincidence, there's a very good reason for that. Uh, and um, that's something that has actually been kind of uh, imposed by the file format. Um, so then when you then, but then when you call h5d write or h5d read, these calls can be uh, collective or independent. Collective is usually uh, if you want uh, to take advantage of uh, two-phase I.O. Um, so uh, in that case, you can achieve better, better performance on some parallel file systems. Um, but OK, so the reason for collective metadata uh, of these first calls, whenever you create uh, uh, a file, or you create a group, or you create a data set, uh, mostly uh, is due to the, to, to the fact that we use POSIX underneath. And POSIX was mostly designed for our disk drive. Uh, and that reflects in its API, uh, which uh, has kind of a, just, a, just exposes a serial address space where the only thing you see is kind of an offset and you just air seek that offset to different parts of the file. Um, based on that, the, originally the HDF5 file format was kind of designed uh, uh, with, uh, on top of POSIX, of course. Uh, and that's why if you've looked at uh, the, the kind of the uh, guts of the file format, 
uh, you'll see that we store, uh, whenever we create a file, we have to store this uh, file, super, file super block, then uh, we have this object header for every, each file, and then we have to allocate space um, for each uh, data set that you're going to create. Um, so that then you can write independently, uh, uh, for example, in the file. And all this uh, imposes uh, a global serialization. So whenever you, even though you have multiple uh, parallel, uh, multiple processes working in parallel, whenever you want to create a new file, a new file group or data set, those processes have to synchronize uh, to work on that same file. Of course, there's, there's been some uh, mitigations that, uh, and some work that a lot of work has been uh, going on to kind of palliate that. Uh, such as subfiling, or you can do file per process I/O, but uh, uh, well, it's not easy at uh, all level to handle that either way, and uh, you cannot always limit it by POSIX. Um, so, Deos uh, is uh, kind of a new uh, storage uh, system that, uh, right off the bat, says we're not going to use our, our disk drives. Um, and uh, you have this kind of separation between uh, metadata and build data. So metadata uh, is, to, is stored uh, in, uh, into uh, persistent memory uh, through NVDMs. So it's through that library called PMDK. And the build data is then sent to uh, thready cross-point SSDs through NVMe. Uh, of course, the DEOS um, storage system is composed of multiple storage nodes, uh, and you have all your compute nodes that then talk, for example, through the HDF5 library uh, over the network and to these storage, storage nodes. Um, so there are a couple of things that uh, well, DEOS aims at, and that's uh, uh, also, uh, we by, uh, they bypass the, uh, uh, all the kernel OS calls. So there is end-to-end, uh, uh, the end-to-end -end calls into uh, user level space. Um, we have also, they also have um, uh, low latency, high message rates, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, I don't want to, to spend too much time on all the details of DAOs here, uh, but um, you can look it up. Uh, it's available online. Um, uh, everything that I'm going to talk uh, about here is also, is also um, uh, open source. So, uh, Just also to emphasize on the, on the network part of it, um, so we usually use a very high speed network, so such as InfiniBan, Intel OmniPass. Uh, uh, so we're not just using just TCP here. So, I mean, of course, to use all these environments, you need uh, a good supercomputer on a lot of hardware. So the, the work that we've been doing, um, so we've kind of uh, been working on se several layers of the HDF5 library. Uh, we've, there are some components that we've added, some that we've enhanced. Uh, uh, the, so we have the, so since now you're familiar with the, with the vol layer, uh, we've also done some work to kind of uh, 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 expose some more uh, primitives and so on. Uh, uh, we've made more, uh, more API, more HDF5 API public so that the VOR connectors can use them. Uh, we've also made a lot of work on the tools uh, so that they can be used by uh, the DAOs VOR. And uh, uh, one of the things also we've added is an external test suite that can be used by uh, actually any uh, external vol connector uh, to test their functionality with, uh, with the library. So it's just to, get, to try to give you um, a, a, good, uh, a good way of uh, testing your connector and make sure that 
uh, it is able to support uh, uh, well, and it's also able to tell you which percentage of the library you're able to support because as you've probably seen, we have a lot of uh, functionality to support. Um, so the Dales wall here, so it, it's kind of, it's very separate from the native form. Um, uh, so, but as you see here, I also have an arrow here that goes from uh, MPIIO to DAOs. And the reason is uh, that uh, the DAOs team also provides uh, a driver for MPIIO that allows you to, to write uh, uh, directly to DAOs. Uh, so, uh, one thing is also important is the tool support that we've done. We have, uh, whenever you want to kind of uh, reformat uh, a native file in today's, you can use the HVAP repack tool and you're able to, to repack your file in today's format. Uh, so we have to, to go a bit faster. Um, so um, there are multiple ways to use the Deos for. Um, there is one way that uh, if you don't want to, to, if you're just looking for compatibility, uh, there is almost no more, no, no code change. Uh, and you can just use the environment variables that we've shown earlier. Or um, you can use, what we recommend actually is to use the HFP set for DAOs property list uh, so that you can uh, have better control of what you're doing. Um, uh, but you're also free to use the environment variables. Uh, Deos also provides uh, another component called uh, unified namespace. Uh, it embeds some Deos metadata that allows you to, to find the, the file, your file in Deos more easily so that you don't have to kind of pass uh, too many parameters. Um, we've also added some sort of auto detection mechanism um, that allows you to, if you have an existing file, it's, uh, it, it allows for the de uh, detection of uh, kind of the, the format of your file, whether it should be opened by the native ball or also the, or the DAOs ball. The DAOs ball file format. Um, so DAOs here provides um, a kind of, a exposes a KV uh, API. Um, uh, it's a bit different from a standard key value uh, API because the, the, the key is actually separated into two, two separate keys. You have a distribution key that allows you to uh, distribute your data over multiple targets and an attribute key that just uh, attaches some information. Uh, so you see, as opposed to uh, the previous uh, native file format that I showed earlier, uh, the way we store the data here, for example, for a group, um, we have a D key for internal metadata uh, and then a D key for link name uh, and then just uh, separate A keys. Uh, but the thing that is more interesting is for data sets, you see that we have um, separate D keys for each chunk. So each that allows us to uh, distribute each chunk of the data across multiple targets. Um, if you've not used that much the chunking API uh, with HDF5 parallel IO um, here, uh, that's kind of becomes a first class citizen. So like I just said for um, data placement and replications, uh, we have a default uh, chunking in all, enabled by default also for contiguous data sets, but you can control it with HFP set chunk and uh, set uh, the, si the size of your chunk that you want. Um, you can also uh, control how you want these chunks to be placed using uh, the DAOs object class. So that's also, per, uh, you can control that uh, per object at per object level. Uh, so you can redefine uh, which objects go onto uh, which many targets you can. And for all these, you can also set the number of replicas that you want. So that's uh, uh, only for recovery. So when the case where uh, you have a failure and you want to, uh, there is a failure and you want to, reco to recover your data. So you can control kind of the degree of uh, uh, how, 
how critical it is, what kind of data it is. Uh, again, when I'm talking about targets, it's not exactly the same as storage nodes in the sense that you can have multiple uh, storage targets per node. We have, uh, 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 we support now almost uh, all the HDF5 features. Um, so except those that are very specific to the native file format. We have a new type of object though. Uh, so addition, uh, uh, that, is, that is added to, well, the objects that you know, like data set attribute or data type that is called map. And the map really um, gives you a, a a KV uh, object API that you can just directly use to store into DAOs. Uh, it, when you start using DAOs, it's, uh, it's very important that you kind of just uh, look at that because uh, you're probably get, going to get uh, a lot of performance out of that. Um, and that also gives you um, uh, a new way of thinking how you're going to uh, store your data. Of course, in that case, you have to do code modifications. Uh, we support file deletion because, of course, you can't really uh, delete a file just with command line uh, uh, very easily. Um, the thing that is very important then here with DAOs is that we support independent metadata, meaning that you can create now um, uh, all your groups, data sets, uh, independently, and you no longer have this kind of collective or serializ global serialization that is imposed to you. It's currently not enabled by default, uh, so you have to call this uh, property, but uh, it will probably be default behavior in the future, and um, uh, we'll have to rethink uh, uh, in terms of HDF5 semantics uh, how we want uh, for example, uh, the standard H5D create call to behave uh, by default. Uh, it's not very clear, for example, right now that an H5D create call has to be collective. You just kind of know it because you read the documentation. Um, so we also support asynchronous IO at the connector level. Um, it doesn't use the, 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 the asynchronous connector but uh, so we implemented it uh, directly into the DAOs connector itself. It uses a DAOs task engine. Um, we don't necessarily need ad additional progress threads, but uh, it's recommended to have at least one uh, so that you can make progress in background. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to make progress whenever you enter the library. Um, the HDF5 uh, API returns before, bef in that case, the HDF5 API returns before the operation completes and we pla place the operation in an event set, same way as uh, what Tang showed earlier. Uh, the only thing that uh, we kind of uh, a bit differentiate here is that we expect the application to explicitly control uh, the asynchrony. Uh, we don't really want you to try to do things um, implicit implicitly and um, we expect uh, applications to kind of uh, rework uh, their code the same way they would use uh, MPI non-blocking, for example, and uh, wait for this, uh, uh, for this uh, data operations to complete to avoid main copy and do uh, correct error handling. Just to give you some uh, very early performance results. Uh, so this is on uh, a borough cluster uh, at Intel. Uh, the, um, this cluster uses uh, Intel OmniPass, uh, uh, the Intel OmniPass network. So it's uh, very high bandwidth uh, and very low uh, latency net, uh, network fabric. Um, here I'm just trying to show you um, uh, kind of performance comparison with just using uh, native HDF5, uh, which is in uh, orange, uh, versus uh, using DAOs when you have the ability to uh, no longer have this global serialization of uh, data set create calls. So uh, you can see that clearly the number of operations per second that what you're able to uh, create data sets just explodes uh, and you're able to be much faster. Um, 
one thing uh, to note is in the case of uh, just uh, contiguous I um, contiguous uh, data set writes, so that's what is uh, done with IOR. Um, uh, you may not see a lot of improvements uh, if you just compare just with uh, uh, MPIIO over DAOs. And the reason is because they also enable uh, uh, chunking by default underneath. Uh, so for a very large IO and it's just a, a single uh, contiguous block, uh, you may see um, more or less the, the same performance. However, however, if you're writing smaller data, uh, you you'll probably still get much better performance with the DAOs wall just because we're able to uh, to bypass a lot of infrastructure in the in the HDF5 library, and uh, we can pay more attention to very small IO. Um, just to, to give you uh, current status, uh, so we've done some application porting work, um, so using PMC pack, um, uh, uh, E3SM. Uh, so uh, we've been working uh, with NetCDF also on uh, making it work with DAOs. Uh, and we're also currently looking at uh, v uh, porting VPIC uh, using asynchronous IO and uh, the DAOs role. Uh, so we're in the phase of doing tun uh, tuning work. Um, uh, we expect that to be done uh, early next month. Uh, we also have in the process of doing, uh, finishing async IO and we have this release focused for end of November. Uh, the repositories that are uh, there, um, you can you feel free to, uh, to have a look if you're interested. The DAOs will require the 1.12.1 release of HDF5, just because we, there were some uh, fixes that were just needed for, to support it, and we, can, we can't, uh, we won't be able to support earlier versions. I'd like to thank Intel and Argonne National Lab for uh, their help on all the kind of collaboration we've, we've had so far. Um, any questions? Hey, Drew. <coughs> we have one question in the chat. Uh, if that's pretty straightforward to answer, we could take it now. Or uh, if it seems like it's more difficult, uh, maybe that's something to add into uh, the chat room. Okay. Oh, you're probably seeing my screen. Uh, oh, seeing my oh, I think screen? Mohammed answered to you. Okay. Yeah, this was storage read write consistent. Um, and Mohammed okay. says yes. So that's good. 